Hey, Daily Dosers, my name's Austin Payne. I'm one of the high school pastors on the Vista campus. And today we dive into maybe a familiar story in chapter 39 of Genesis. And, and I love this story of Joseph for so many reasons, but one of the biggest ones is there were 13 years that passed between the moment that his own brothers betrayed him and kind of sold him into slavery to the moment that God's plan would be revealed in Joseph's life, that he would come to Pharaoh's service and, and be this dream interpreter. 13 years go by of this roller coaster of a life that there had to have been so many moments in Joseph's life that he doubted what God was doing. And yet time and time again, Joseph proves faithful. And this is another one of those moments in chapter 39 it, that where Joseph finds himself after being sold into slavery by his own brothers, he finds himself in, in the service of a guy named Potiphar. And because of his faithfulness, because of his work ethic, he works up the way in Potiphar's house. He works himself up into the ranks. And it says that we, Joseph found favor in, in the eyes of Potiphar and he became his attendant. And Potiphar puts him in charge of the household and he, he's entrusted to care everything that Potiphar owns. In chapter 39, we see that because of Joseph's initiative, because of his faithfulness, he, he earns favor with Potiphar and Potiphar puts him in charge of his household. But we skip down later, the story kind of takes a, a, a wicked turn it, when, when Potiphar's wife catches it, her, her eye with Joseph. And it says this in verse 7, Now Joseph was well built and handsome. And after a while, his master's wife took notice of Joseph and said, Come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, My master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns is entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you're his wife. <laughs> like this is like a logical argument here. And how then could I do such a thing, how, such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, right? There's this temptation day after day, come to bed with me, come to bed with me. While Potiphar's away, come to bed with me. And he goes, I can't do this wicked thing. And although she spoke to him day after day, he refused to go to bed with her and, and underline this part in your Bibles or even be with her. I, I, I love the wisdom of Joseph here to go, I, I can't just face this barrage of temptation over and over and over and over again. He's this well-built, young, handsome man, and he has this woman berating him going, come to bed with me, come to bed with me. And he goes, no, I refuse. And also, I'm, tr I'm not trying to be around you. But I love this next part. It says, one day he goes into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servants were inside. Right? This is one of those like, uh-oh moments. Right? None, of the none of the household servants were inside. She caught him by the cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. And now this story doesn't end well for him. Potter comes, Potiphar comes home. His wife makes up a story about how Joseph was trying to take her into bed. She has his cloak to prove it. And he ends up getting sent to jail for this for a long time and forgotten. And it, the, the story goes from bad to worse. And yet, the moment that I want to focus in on and that is so convicting for me is that he ran out of the house. Right? Sometimes I think I need to be strong in the midst of temptation and that I need to you know, love God enough to, to sit down in the temptation and face it and overcome it. But the, there's two pieces of wisdom here that I, I, I think I just learned so much from Joseph in this story. One, he refuses to be around her. And two, in the moment, in the, the climax of this temptation, he runs out of the house. And I think that's sometimes literally what we need to do. We need to physically remove ourselves from a temptation, whether it's a computer screen or an iPhone screen or overeating or a gossip in a scenario or spending money where we shouldn't be spending money or whatever it may be. We all kind of know those temptations or those pet sins that we keep around that are daily struggles for us. I, I definitely know what mine are. And I think that the physical act of removing ourselves from a scenario can be really, really helpful to just change your environment or to not be around that thing or to create safeguards where you don't have to face it. You don't have to walk right in front of it day in and day out. And I love this challenge from Joseph in the midst of his life, in the midst of his faithfulness to go, hey, I'm not going to be around you. There's wisdom in that. And two, when I find myself in this scenario, he didn't stay and reason with her and go, ah, Potiphar's wife, like I've told you, if I've told you once, I've told you a thousand times, like, no, I'm not going to bed. He goes, ah, and runs out of the house. He removes himself from the situation. And I wonder what are the situations we need to remove ourselves from? Is there something today that I need to, I need to physically walk away from in order to not face that temptation? Because if I face it again, I'm going to give in. I love the challenge from Joseph. Thanks Dozers, we'll see you tomorrow.